the OA1, the hits. <laughs> Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower, and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. On today's program, you will hear stories from Katie Weaver and Brian Lynn. Then Gregory Stockel and Anna Mateo present this week's education report. Finally, we hear the lesson of the day from John Russell. But first, here is Katie Weaver. The oldest gunmaker in America is closing its factory in a small town in the state of New York. Remington Firearms was formed two centuries ago in what is now the town of Ilion, a village in the heart of New York's Mohawk Valley area. It began when a lifelet Remington forged his first rifle barrel nearby, in 1816. Remington's owners recently announced it would permanently shut the factory in March. They said costs were too high to continue making guns in Ilion. The company is uniting all its operations in the southeastern state of Georgia. Remington officials say Georgia is friendlier to the firearms industry than New York. The company's recent history has been marked by a lawsuit connected to the mass murder of 20 children and six adults in 2012 at an elementary school in Connecticut. Remington Arms agreed to pay $73 million to relatives of victims and a survivor to settle the legal action. The company also declared financial failure more than once. The factory workforce had dropped from about 1,300 workers more than 10 years ago to around 300. About 7,600 people live in Ilion. The gunmaker's withdrawal is a major loss to the town's economy and more. When Remington leaves, it's not going to be like a facility leaving. It's going to be like part of your family has moved off, said former factory worker Jim Conover. Conover retired in 2004 after 40 years at the plant. Everyone knows someone who worked at the factory. For some families, jobs there are almost a birthright. Conover's father and sons also worked at the plant. Building engineer Frank Rusty Brown has had many family members among his co-workers. My mom worked there, my dad worked there, my wife works there with me now, my daughter works there with me now, my second daughter works there with me now, and my son-in-law works there, said Brown, who is president of the United Mine Workers of America, Local 717. He added, so it's a double hit for me and my wife, two of us out of a job. The current owners of Remington Firearms, Rem Arms, blamed production inefficiencies for the plant closure in a letter to union officials late last year. They noted the high cost of caring for about 92,903 square meters of space in several buildings, many dating to World War I. 
Rem Arms added that Georgia offered an environment that better supports and welcomes the firearms industry. Rem Arms CEO Ken Darcy also said in a news release that the industry was concerned about the legislative environment in New York. But in a stretch of upstate New York, where support for gun rights tends to be strong, some Republican elected officials seized on the company's comment about Georgia. They linked the plant closure to gun control measures championed by New York City area Democrats in recent years. Rem Arms, which bought the firearms business in 2020, did not answer emails and calls seeking comment. The company said in its letter to the union it expected to end facility operations around March 4th. The company earlier announced in 2021 it was moving its headquarters to LaGrange, Georgia. Rem Arms said it would open a factory and research operation there. I'm Katie Weaver. Researchers say new evidence suggests Saturn's icy moon Mimas likely has a large underground ocean. Astronomers based their finding on data collected by the American Space Agency, NASA's Cassini spacecraft. Cassini observed Saturn and its more than 140 moons for more than 10 years before ending operations in 2017. The spacecraft's data covered details about the moon's orbit and rotation. Researchers reported the data provided the best evidence yet of a hidden ocean about 20 to 30 kilometers beneath the frozen surface. Mimas is a relatively small moon about 400 kilometers wide. Researchers say Mimas lacks formations on its surface found on other moons which suggest the presence of underground water. These can include a broken surface as well as geyser activity. Scientists said the fact that Mimas did not have unusual surface formations made it an unlikely candidate for an underground ocean. Valérie Lanay of the Paris Observatory was co-author of a study describing the research in the publication Nature. Mimas was probably the most unlikely place to look for a global ocean and liquid water more generally, he said in an email to the Associated Press. Lene added, So that looks like a potentially habitable world, but nobody knows how much time is needed for life to arise. The amount of water thought to exist below the surface of Mimas would represent just 1.2 to 1.4 percent of Earth's oceans, Lene said. That is because of the moon's small size. However, Mimas does have a very large crater caused by a crash with a space object. For this reason, the appearance of the moon has been compared to the fictional Death Star space station in the popular movie series Star Wars. English astronomer William Herschel discovered Mimas in 1789. It is named after a giant in Greek mythology. An article appearing with the study in Nature 
was co-written by Mattia Chuk of the SETI Institute Research Center and Alyssa Rose Roden of the Southwest Research Institute. The two were not part of the study, but they wrote that they find the idea that a small icy moon can contain young oceans inspiring. The researchers said the underground ocean appears to have formed recently in space terms, possibly between 5 and 15 million years ago. Lene said the ocean would likely have an overall temperature of around zero degrees Celsius, but the temperature at the sea floor might be much warmer. The fact that the water is in contact with the moon's rocky center may create the right complex chemical conditions to support life. But the researchers noted that because the ocean is believed to be young, it might not be ideal for life to form there. Scientists have said in the past that another moon of Saturn, Enceladus, might possess the warmth, water, and chemical compounds necessary to support life. But because Mimas's ocean is so young, it might be a challenge for life's development, study co-writer Gabrielle Toby told Reuters. Toby is a scientist at the French scientific research agency CNRS and the University of Nantes. However, Toby added, nobody knows how long life needs to emerge from a suitable environment. Mimas may offer a unique opportunity to explore the first stage of life's development. I'm Brian Lynn. Unclear guidelines for when to keep a child at home if they are sick might play a part in the nationwide problem of students missing too much school. Some activists, school officials, and the state of California are now asking that parents send their children to school even if they show signs of sickness. They say acceptable problems include eye infections and lice. Families need to hear they no longer must keep children at home at any sign of sickness, said Hedy Chang. Chang is the director of Attendance Works, a nonprofit group aiming to improve school attendance. The group has issued its own guidance. It urges parents to send children to school if they can join day-to-day -day activities, have low-level sickness, or head lice. The American Academy of Pediatrics is an organization for doctors who treat children. It recommends that children stay home when there are signs of sickness like fever, vomiting, or diarrhea, or when students are not well enough to participate in class. A fever is defined as a body temperature above 38 degrees Celsius. But many school districts go far beyond that, offering different signs of sickness that would prevent parents from sending their children to school. Trinace Dorsey Hollins has a five-year-old daughter who was sick a lot last year. Dorsey Hollins followed school guidelines and kept her daughter home when she had a cough, painful throat, fever, or sneezing. Near the end of the year, school officials in Fort Worth, Texas, called her in to talk about why her daughter had missed so much school. 
During the pandemic, schools urged parents and children to stay home at any sign of illness. Although the emergency has ended, she said no one has said that those rules have changed. In the past, if the child didn't have a fever, then it's okay to send them to school, said the mother of five and thirteen year old children. But now, it's like if they have a cough, you might want to keep them home. Which is it? Dorsey Hollins's youngest daughter goes to school in Fort Worth Independent School District. It suggests staying home if a child has a cough, sore throat, or rash. The guidelines say a student should be fever free for 24 hours without medication before returning to school. Austin Independent School District in Texas lists signs of illness like eye redness, undetermined rash, or open draining lesions as reasons to stay home. Other school districts have different guidelines. Children with lice cannot go to class in New York City schools. And Maryland's Montgomery County schools recommend keeping a child home for stomach pain, pale or flushed face, or thick yellow discharge from the nose. Dr. Claire McCarthy is a doctor at Boston Children's Hospital who teaches at Harvard Medical School. She said it is understandable that different places would have different guidelines. Each school or school district has a different tolerance for illness, said McCarthy. Test results show that children fell behind in their studies when schools closed during the pandemic. Children who regularly missed school found it more difficult to catch up. During the 2021 to 2022 school year, more than 25% of students missed at least 10% of the school year. That number is up from 15% before the pandemic. Missing 10% or more of the school year puts students at risk. Students who miss school also might miss meals, socializing with other students and adults, physical exercise, and mental health and health care services. In addition, teachers must spend a lot of time supporting students who miss class. This takes time from students who attend class and are on target for the year. Recently, the state of California decided to change their stay-at-home guidelines for the autumn. The new guidelines say children with low-level signs of sickness can come to school. Noha Abalata leads the Roots Health Center in Oakland, California. The group says it provides health services for poor people and those affected by inequality. Abalata said the change in guidance might have a greater effect on poor people and minorities. Abalata said people in those communities might be more likely to live in homes with more than one generation, to take public transportation, or have poor heating and cooling systems in their homes. She said she hoped that staying home when sick would continue after the pandemic. Instead, she said, it feels like the pendulum is swinging fiercely back in the other direction. Tracy Schmidt oversees attendance for the Office of Education in San Diego County, California. She said she feels hopeful 
that parents and schools will learn about the new guidance, and that students will miss less school. The most important place for our kids to be is school," she said. "I'm on a." Gregory Stockel joins me now to talk more about this week's education report. Welcome back, Greg. Thanks. I'm happy to be back. This week's story centered on how many parents in the U.S. may be keeping their children home from school too much because they show signs of sickness. That is right, and as we said in the report. COVID nineteen has a lot to do with it. During the pandemic, children were often not permitted to go to school if they showed any sign of sickness at all. But some schools are issuing guidelines to help clear up when a child should stay home and when they are permitted to go to school. You described a few different signs of sickness. Could you tell us a bit more about some of them? I'd be happy to. So, a sign of illness is also called a symptom. Symptoms let us know that we are sick. I talked about a few different symptoms of illness in the story. They can include a fever, cough, pale or flushed face, and thick yellow discharge from the nose. What does it mean to have a pale face, and what about a flushed face? So, when your face is pale, it is a lighter color than what it normally is, and a flushed face is when it is redder due to increased blood flow. Well, I hope you're not experiencing any of those symptoms. Thanks again, Greg, for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me, Ashley. In this next report, Ashley Thompson tells us about a costly food that is popular during Vietnam's Lunar New Year celebrations: dong tao chicken. Pay careful attention to the word "fragrant." We will talk more about it. After the report, Dong Tao chicken has been a food of choice for generations in Vietnam for the Lunar New Year or Tet. The rare bird is known for its strangely large feet. It is also known as a dragon chicken. The chicken gets its name from the village of Dong Tao. About thirty kilometers southeast of Hanoi, Dong Tao chickens are believed to bring good luck and wealth to their owners. At one point, they were only bred to serve meat for the royal families and officials. Today, demand for Dong Tao chicken in Vietnam has risen sharply. That demand comes from a growing number of wealthy people in one of Asia's fastest-growing economies. Le Chang Tsung is a chicken farmer in the village of Dong Tao. He told Reuters that a fully-grown Dong Tao chicken at one year old sells for two hundred dollars, and sometimes as much as four hundred dollars. The demand for Dong Tao chicken is also fueled by its rich taste. Luc Duc Tuan is a twenty-five-year-old cook in Hanoi. Tuan said a Dong Tao chicken has its best taste at the age of thirteen to fifteen months. When steamed, the skin will be crispy, with a fragrant aroma of its own. And a sweeter meat compared to other normal chicken, Tuan said. Wen Ti Hong Nung is a chicken farmer. 
She said the most valuable parts of Dong Tao chickens are its legs. Their large legs make it difficult for them to hatch from their eggs. Sometimes they can accidentally break their eggs. It takes about a year to raise a Dong Tao chicken, compared to three months for other kinds. The chickens are now also raised beyond the village of Dong Tao. That means more people may have the chance to buy a Dong Tao chicken. But Fan Van Hu, a Dong Tao agriculture official, said chickens raised in the village and fed with its native rice and corn have the best taste. Production hasn't met domestic demand yet, Hu added. I'm sure you won't find any Dong Tao chicken in any KFC restaurants in the foreseeable future. I'm Ashley Thompson. Before the report, we asked you to pay careful attention to the word fragrant. Can you remember when you heard it? You heard the term in a quote from a cook who works in Hanoi. Let's listen again. Luk Duk Tuan is a 25-year-old cook in Hanoi. Tuan said a Dong Tao chicken has its best taste at the age of 13 to 15 months. When steamed, the skin will be crispy with a fragrant aroma of its own and a sweeter meat compared to other normal chicken. Tuan said. We spell fragrant like this. F-R-A-G-R-A-N-T. Fragrant is an adjective. It means having a pleasant smell that is often sweet. There are a small number of nouns that often appear with fragrant, these words generally relate to a scent carried in the air. Two kinds of things are often described as giving off fragrant smells, foods and plants. So you are likely to hear about a food giving off a fragrant smell or a fragrant aroma. In the same way, you are likely to hear about a plant giving off a fragrant smell. You are likely to hear statements about fragrant flowers, fragrant blossoms, or fragrant herbs. The two central ideas you need to remember is that fragrant is related to the sense of smell and is almost always positive in meaning. So, if you hear Dong Tao chicken described as having a fragrant aroma, you can be confident that the meaning is positive. Even if you do not know what exactly an aroma is, you can guess that it is something related to the sense of smell. A few words about how to pronounce fragrant. It involves two vowel sounds, a and a. We generally place stress on the first part of the word, fre. It involves the A vowel sound. We generally do not stress the second part of the word, grunt. It involves the A uh vowel sound. Let's work together to pronounce the word. Listen and repeat after me. Fragrant. 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 Today we learned about a dish that is often linked to the Lunar New Year in Vietnam. We learned about the word fragrant, its meaning, usage, and pronunciation. We hope that after listening to this lesson, you will be able to enjoy some good, tasty, and perhaps slightly sweet food. Or should we say, we hope that you will be able to enjoy some fragrant dishes in the near future. And that's the lesson of the day. I'm John Russell. And that's our program for today. 
Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley.